But first, let's start here. Our country right now is in the throes of an uprising that has engulfed the world all over. You see mass uprisings. In some countries, you're seeing violence, for example, in Greece or in the UK. But there are mostly, the majority, are beautiful scenes of people coming together in order to repudiate what they consider to be an unjust system economically, but also in the context of human health. This is civil unrest, but it's civil unrest pushed on by righteous indignation. A collective and kinetic dispensation of First Amendment rights in all 50 states in the face of a tyrannical regime and a blue gang of troglodytes hell-bent on suppressing the peaceful assembly of the civilian population. Something that shouldn't be forgotten, however, is that the system that the public is currently rising up against was bipartisan, meaning one brick after the next was put into place by people on both sides of the political spectrum, Democrats and Republicans. Oftentimes, Democrats will use the excuse we didn't necessarily want to look weak, but whatever their excuse, they still put through the policies and the procedures that allowed our system to be what this system is, the exact system that we are all pushing to take down. Nevertheless, like every other movement that has erupted organically in the United States, the Democratic Party is always waiting in the wings to appropriate it, to basically co-op something that is beautiful, something that is rather powerful, and bring it in order to con people for votes. This movement, unfortunately, is no different. They genuinely think the public is stupid. Amy Klobuchar tweeting about the upgraded charges to Chauvin, Derek Chauvin, and the three other cops who, are, who basically watched Chauvin commit that murder. It's necessary to point out that Amy Klobuchar, why she's tweeting about this now and why she's talking about police accountability now, when she was in a position to do something as Minnesota AG Chauvin, the one that murdered George Floyd, she let him off, not just in the killing of Anthony Reyes, but also in multiple police shootings after the killing of Reyes, leading up until this murder right here. You think we're stupid. We don't need your commentary on this, Amy Klobuchar. Let's move to Joe Biden, who is in a picture that came out yesterday with him kneeling with several other black people behind him, flanking him, all of them wearing masks. They want to keep their distance, social distancing and all. But Joe Biden kneeling in that church with all of these other African-Americans standing behind him. That picture is disgusting. A, Joe Biden, even now, even now, is looking at one black person in the face and still lying about being part of the civil rights movement. Even now. Biden admitted to that back in the 80s. They even had videos that Trump put out attacking Joe Biden for that lie. Didn't stop him from still being in that church, making that lie, talking about he's uh, basically unlocking the movie theaters in Delaware. Nonsense. On top of that, this is also the person that constructed the Biden crime bill. He literally put through the basic laws that incentivize putting black bodies in cages, working with singing in a day like segregationists and outright racists to do so. Joe Biden, he bragged about it. He's been bragging about it for years. And that doesn't even touch the pushing back against the civil rights movement, the pushing through legislation to try to get rid of things like Social Security or pass a balanced budget amendment. I'm making the point to you that Joe Biden, while he is taking this knee, flanked by all of these African Americans now, for the entire time of his time while he was in Congress and in a position to do something, he took policy on the economic side and on the side of criminal justice to make our situation and to make our country that much worse. So all of this talk that he's bringing in now is basically repudiating everything that he's did for the entirety of his career. Joe Biden thinks we are stupid. This flagrant liar honestly thinks we are stupid. And last but certainly not least, and to be honest, not even last. I mean, we can go to Nancy Pelosi. There are a list of them who are out there basically trying to accommodate, to co-op this very specific movement in order to get votes for one Joe Biden. But we got to go to Obama. Obama has been making a lot of noise as of late. In one video, he attacked Donald Trump. 
no necessarily complaints about the attacks on Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been incompetent in his handling of this virus. And that unhinged speech in the Rose Garden was massively hyperbolic. But just because Trump is horrible doesn't necessarily mean that Obama was great, nor should there be any lusting over the time that Obama was in office. People have rose-colored glasses on this. This is just as bad to some degree as the people who've been lusting over George Bush, the man who got a thousand or a million people killed. Not to mention we're still in those wars today as a result of what George Bush did. So George Bush and people who are backing him, the liberals who have all of a sudden started to love George Bush can spare me, spare me the, the beauty of a war criminal as he comes out and attacks the current president. But Obama, let's be specific to Obama. So let's hear the clip of Obama who recently came out and gave this talk about civil rights and, and about his time in office. Let's hear the clip. Challenges and structural problems here in the United States uh, have been thrown into high relief. Uh, they're the outcomes not just of the immediate moments in time, but uh, they're the result of a long history of slavery and Jim Crow and redlining and institutionalized uh, racism that uh, too often have been uh, the plague, the original sin of our society. Um, and in some ways, as tragic as these past few weeks have been, as difficult and scary and uncertain as they've been, uh, they've also been an incredible opportunity. Yes, it has been an opportunity. One that you haven't assisted in the least, meaning we forget, or some people might forget of Obama's time while he was in office. If you remember, Obama co-opted Occupy Wall Street in the language of Occupy Wall Street while turning around and arguing for the 99% while giving 95% of the income gains to the top 1%. Think about that. He co-opted Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street was a massive uprising of the public anger, angry, at basically the wealth being distributed to Wall Street and Wall Street not having any consequences for their wealth being distributed to them. Obama gave 95% of the income to that top 1% while co-opting the movement and the language of Occupy Wall Street simultaneously working with state and local governments to bash and beat up protesters in order to get those people away. He would be the first one to say, hey, I would need the public to push me. No, when the public had that opportunity to do so, Obama squashed and crushed all of those protesters. On top of that, people forget Standing Rock, where what you're seeing now and the violence that is put forth on all of these people who are out there, these peaceful protesters, that violence was visited on Native Americans as they were praying, kneeling, trying to protect their water. Yes, that's Obama. He thinks we're stupid. And let's not forget Gates, the friend of Obama, where the cop locked up in his own home. And what did Obama do? He couldn't be bothered to say anything significant, couldn't be bothered to say anything strong. Instead, he wanted to have a beer summit to invite the cop that acted quote unquote stupidly and arrested the man in front of his own home. That's Obama. That's the person who we're talking about right here who giving these speech, the slow moving speech about civil rights and whatnot. All of them think we are stupid, performative trash. They were in office. They had the opportunity to do something and they did squat. You had years and years of incrementalism. They had gotten to the point of having the public so deadened in their expectations of the political system that they see Nancy Pelosi ripping up a speech or they see this nonsense and they swoon over the good years that did not exist. No, let's not let them co-op this protest. Don't let them co-op this movement. They may think we're stupid, but let's uh. show them that we are not. Just because some random idiot is kneeling, just because some other person is taking a photo shot, doesn't necessarily mean that those people were instrumental in assisting you into what you are trying to get accomplished now. Don't fall for this nonsense. Bob, as an organizer, I would imagine you have to love Joe Biden kneeling or Obama coming out, um, giving these little statements all of a sudden with these guys trying to get Biden elected, co-opting this movement. You have to love that. 